here's the deal. We know we can do 120 because we've seen it happen already. And the people you know, people I know, people who I write about in the book, the researchers, if they can't do 50% better than what we already can do today in the next 100 years, it means a comet hit the planet. It, it, it's inevitable that this is going to happen. And it is not science fiction. We know the seven pillars, seven things that happen as you age, and we know what to do about each of those. And I would just encourage you to look at aging is death by a thousand cuts. And wouldn't it be nice if you just took a few less cuts, they weren't as deep, and you healed from them faster than Mother Nature intended? That's all you have to do to add decades of looking better, feeling better, and having your brain work and being able to walk around under your own power. And along the way, there's amazing tech coming along that will allow you to tell your cells to just get younger. How many of you want to be superhuman? All right. So let me introduce my good friend, Dave Asprey. All right. So if you don't know who he is, Dave Asprey is the founder and CEO of Bulletproof 360, creator of the global phenomenon Bulletproof Coffee, the two times New York Times bestselling author, the host of the Webby award-winning podcast Bulletproof Radio, serial entrepreneur, and a global change agent. Dave has dedicated over two decades of his life identifying and working with world-renowned doctors, scientists, luminaries of human existence, and innovators to uncover the most advanced methods for enhancing mental and physical performance. Dave's discoveries in the companies he has founded offer tools that enable people the opportunity to take control of their body, mind, and biology, elevating human performance far beyond what we ever dreamed possible or what was previously deemed possible. By employing the principles of biohacking, a term added to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary in September of 2018, with Dave's influence, which is, I mean, go figure, right? Uh, Dave has lost over 100 pounds, upgraded his brain, learned to sleep more efficiently in less time, and become a more effective entrepreneur, husband, father, and overall human being. Dave has been featured on media outlets such as the Today Show, CNN, CNBC, Nightline, Dr. Oz, the Steve Harvey Show, and more. His impact has been felt on a global scale. He's a true game changer and a maverick. Give it up for Mr. Dave Astor. Thank you, Dave. Right. Well, look at you. Always, you know. So... What the hell exactly is biohacking mean? What is a biohack and what are the most effective biohacks? All right, biohacking, new word in the English language, added at the end of 2018. And actually my name's in the definition, which is cool, so people say I'm the father of biohacking. The art and science of changing the environment around you and inside of you so that you have full control of your own biology. Okay. Now if you're an entrepreneur, you'd like to be able to have your brain work all the time, show up, tap into creativity, not be a zombie, not yell at your kids. So that's what most entrepreneurs want. Right. And it might be, I want to be a balloon animal too, because you're into bodybuilding, that's, that's cool. Uh, or you might want to say, I want to be you know, the, the best writer. I don't want to be the fastest person on earth. It doesn't matter. It's control of your own biology. Make this do what I want. In my case, weighing 300 pounds and feeling you, like So you, you did weigh 300 pounds at what age? I was 23 when I hit that. Wow. Yeah. And how long did it take you to go from that state to you know, a, a healthier oh, state. About 15 years. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I wrote the Bulletproof Diet. That's why I started the blog. So I was a VP at Trend Micro. I was, uh, in fact, I sold the first thing ever sold over the internet. It was a caffeine t-shirt out of my dorm room in the early 90s. So I'm this Silicon Valley tech guy. Mm -hmm. And like, no one ever told me this. And I'm pissed off about it. And I finally got it dialed in. So I'm just going to write a blog about it. So I wasn't planning on getting venture funding. I wasn't planning on starting a company around this. I just wanted to like write down the stuff that no one had told me when I was 20 that would have really saved me a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first half the weight you want to lose, easy. Keeping it off, very hard. And losing all the weight you want to lose and then doing it without constant struggle and without any effort, that's the hard part. That's what no one that I'd been able to find after a lot of looking had done and that's what I've done. I'm not hungry. I'm never hungry. And I'm 10.1% body fat right now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so I want to ask you what are the most effective biohacks ever discovered. First, though, I want to make the distinction of like biohacking or hacking in general is one of these terms that is getting used in so many <laughs> ways. And there's yeah. so much bullshit that yeah. is called hack this, hack that. And some things 
you know, you don't, you know, you, I don't know if you can hack everything, but it seems to be, so how do you make the distinction of what is, have e efficacy and valid versus what, what do you get caught up in in buzzwords? So I, I was actually a computer hacker. That, that's what I did. Trend Micro is a computer security company and my career has been computer security and performance and all that. So when you hack a system, it means it's a black box. You don't know what's inside it. You do your best to look at the outside to evaluate it and then say, I'm going to break in. I'm going to change the state of the system. If I don't understand it, that's okay. I want results, right? And maybe you want to break it. Maybe you want to make it better. It depends what kind of hacker you are. Mm -hmm. But it's that mindset. We don't have to understand everything in there. So what are the best things for us? It, it depends what your goals are. But I get a little bit frustrated when people say, oh, I'm, here's, here's a hack for that. Like, that's not a hack. Brushing your teeth isn't a hack. It, it's basic <laughs> hygiene, right? Now, if you said, I found a way to brush my teeth in, in you know, 10% of the time it took me before, and I've completely removed the chance of getting cabbages in the next 10 years, I'd say, all right, that's a cool biohack. You saved time, and you did something better than it was done before. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's a nuance there. Right. So most of the time, there's all sorts of garbage SEO stuff. You say, you know, 10 hacks for a high performance day. And you're like, what are you talking about? Like, step one, you know, do something. And, and it's like something out of Reader's Digest. There's no value there. We're talking about changing the environment around you. That means what did you put into your system? Mm -hmm. What kind of light was around you? What did you do for breakfast? Did you change your sleep environment? And it turns out most of the people in the room today are getting old because they sleep crappily, if that's a word. So you suck at sleep. In fact, if you have a problem with sleep, raise your hand. Yeah, I have trouble sleeping. It, and the other half of you, yeah, right, whatever. If you're not measuring it, I don't believe you. This is a ring that measures my sleep. I sucked at sleep for a long time. If you do that one thing, your chances of dying from all-cause mortality go down. Your ability to regulate your blood sugar changes. And you're saying, what should I do? I'm struggling in all this. Quite often, it's a matter of making it dark. Like, how's that for a hack? You actually got curtains that were functional. But in terms of your performance as a human being, <laughs> it actually matters. Is that something you would have read about 10 years ago? No. But it's something the data shows and that you can practice. And there are some things like modafinil and smart drugs or changing what you do to your coffee because it changes your blood sugar levels because it changes the amount of energy available in your mitochondria. This is all real. There's science behind this. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video and I want to let you know that I have a new book that's come out and if you'd like to get it absolutely free, there's a link below in the description or you can wait till the end of this video or you can simply go to joesfreebook.com and you can get a copy there. So well, what's, what's the biology of sickness and candidly how often do you get sick? The biology of sickness, man, there are multiple causes of sickness. End of the day though, your body has a certain amount of stress it can handle and that stress can be from exercise, it can be from getting in a fight with your spouse, it can be from struggling at work, uh, it, it can be from even an unresolved trauma, from drinking too much the night before, from eating a bunch of fried crap. It, it doesn't really matter, there's, there's stuff that comes in. Eventually, there's more stress than your body can handle and you're likely to get sick. And the causative agent, it could be all sorts of things. It could be autoimmunity, it could be a bacteria. I think mold toxins from our environment, breathing mold is a, is a very unrecognized problem. I started a company that's working on solving that problem. I filmed a documentary about it because it's tied directly to Alzheimer's, it's tied directly to cancer, it's tied directly to heart disease, and it's tied to aging. So stuff like that matters, but how do you know if your house has mold in it? Well, yeah. You're not gonna know. You know, you, and I gotta thank you for this because I, uh, earlier in the year, uh, you posted something on Instagram, and it was about parasites. And I called you up, and I, uh, oh, I sent you a text, and I said, yeah. "Who's the top parasite guy that you know?" And you referred me to a guy, and I happen to have his number and name in my contacts already. And then I looked at my notes because I have thousands of contacts. Oh, yeah. uh, and JJ Virgin had connected me with this individual, like you know, a year prior. And I ended up, you know, doing a test and found out I had valley fever. And for those of you that don't know Valley Fever, it comes from fungus and soil and mostly Arizona, New Mexico, or uh, California. And most people don't know what it is. It's not contagious. You can't give it to someone. Uh, but it gets in your system. And I would have not, um, I would have not uh, known that had I not even start, like read something you wrote, yeah. got me thinking, oh, let, me, let me check and test for parasites. And I ended up doing a a 90-minute just phone conversation with his name's Glenn Wilcox yep. and um, 
And he, he mentioned something to me uh, about like 51% of the world population has the cat parasite, uh, what's it called? To Toxoplasmosis. Yeah, and then he said 24%. Per- cat lady is a real thing. Yeah, crazy cat. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and he said 24% of Americans have it. And what they found through their latest research is that you are, uh, I think he said, uh, six times more likely to have a car accident if you have this parasite in your system. And you're thinking if 24% of Americans, <laughs> one in four, have this, that's some pretty scary shit, right? But yeah. the reason I bring this up is that there's all these things that, like you mentioned, mold, that you could be on every different vegan diet, paleo diet, whatever, and if you have other competing things in your digestive system or you have stuff going on in your system, you could be supplementing your way through all kinds of stuff, but it's not getting to the root cause. And I think we are a culture on all levels that treats the fruit, but not the root. What happens, Joe, is, is people say, you know what, I think I'm I'm doing pretty good because you always at that level. You have no idea how you're supposed to feel. You're probably not doing as well as you could. You could be feeling five times better. You could be smarter. You could remember everything you want to remember. And you could actually have the voice in your head shut the hell up. But since none of that's ever happened, where you are, I'm healthy. I'm pretty good. I'm walking around. Look at me. I'm successful. But how would you know unless you have already fallen from where, somewhere you've already been? So we don't know the limits of human performance. And... Then you say, okay, now something's happened. I feel crappy. And you go to the doctor and they say, oh, I don't know, maybe it's you. Or worse, something big happens like for you and you got five different symptoms and they say, oh, maybe here, have some Wellbutrin. You're depressed. Mm-hmm. Like something's wrong with you because they can't figure it out. And this is what happened to me. And the whole biohacking movement, the whole uh, blog, the whole thing I started was, look, doctors said that to me. I'm like, what do you mean? I worked out 18 months for six days a week, 90 minutes a day. And went on a low-fat, low-calorie diet, go team, right? I still weigh 300 pounds. And I go to the doctor. He just says I'm lying and thinks I'm nuts. And this has happened over and over. And there's a problem that all of us have in this room, too. You're successful because you can afford to be here. (laughs) You also then have a name. If you have a name and you go to the doctor, they're going to be more likely to treat you conservatively because if they screw up, you can sue them or you might make them look bad. There's a reason Paul Allen died of something that could be fixed with a simple intravenous treatment because no doctor on earth would take the risk of doing that to Paul Allen because it's better to follow the standard of care even though it killed him. And so we're all at risk for that unless you cultivate a team of high-performance caregivers who are willing to say, let's hack this. Let's put you in charge of your body. And so you have to be the CEO of your own health or hire someone to be the best CEO of your own health. If you look at what Perry said, that's not what you do. You got to have those people on your team. It is fundamental because the first thing that goes is your ability to regulate your emotions. So you're going to yell at your wife. You're going to yell at your husband. You're going to yell at your kids. You're going to yell at your employees. You're going to alienate people. And then you're going to think you're a bad person because you did it. And none of that happened except for for biological reasons. So your book, Superhuman, um, what, why should someone buy this book? This book is my third New York Times bestseller. And this is a book about what I've been doing for the last 20 years on an active, focused plan to live to at least 180. And you might say, oh, for God's sake. Here's the deal. We know we can do 120 because we've seen it happen already. And the people you know, people I know, people who I write about in the book, the researchers, if they can't do 50% better than what we already can do today in the next 100 years, it means a comet hit the planet. It, it, it's inevitable that this is going to happen. And it is not science fiction. We know the seven pillars, seven things that happen as you age, and we know what to do about each of those. And I would just encourage you to look at aging is death by a thousand cuts. And wouldn't it be nice if you just took a few less cuts, they weren't as deep, and you healed from them faster than Mother Nature intended? That's all you have to do to add decades of looking better, feeling better, and having your brain work and being able to walk around under your own power. And along the way, there's amazing tech coming along that will allow you to tell your cells to just get younger. So we are living in this world right now. We just look backwards. And I'll remind you, look backwards 100 years. We were fighting World War I with horses and cavalry 100 years ago. If you think it's not going to be different 100 years from now, with machine learning and AI and all the cool stuff going on, like you're not, you're not watching what's happening. So this is what to do right now. 
starting at zero cost, starting at try this supplement. This is an easy thing to, this is the hundred plus thousand dollar stem cell makeover where I had stem cells injected in my junk and everywhere else and what it's like to do that. So what's it like to have stem cells injected into your junk? <laughs> <laughs> it's like stealing candy from a baby, right? <laughs> uh, so, Joe, yes, they do call me tripod. <laughs> oh, my what, God. What's it like? You Wait. have to look at my Facebook page. I actually did put it on Facebook without seeing any of the stuff you can't unsee. Uh, and you, you see these ugly shoes I'm wearing? So the camera is shooting like this, and as soon as the needle comes down, my toes go, ee! And I can tell you, it, it works, and you can for both men and women. You can have the reproductive capabilities you had in your mid-20s, no matter what your age is, and it, it goes back. It's, it's pretty remarkable. It makes but, me wonder if I should release this video anywhere beyond this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also for the brain. I, I mean, my ability to think, I, am, I, I don't forget words. Hmm. I remember things. I, I can create uh, it, it's so much stronger than it was at any time in my life. And normally, you're supposed to start forgetting words. You're supposed to get weaker, but I'm getting stronger. And that's the thing. As an entrepreneur, as a business person, the demands on your brain are exceptionally high. And you've got to keep it young. Because yeah. if you don't, you're going to walk around and just start doing things that you wish you hadn't done. The good news is that maybe you'll just forget it all because you get Alzheimer's. That's one of the big four things that's likely to take you out. But you can prevent it. It's not that hard. We understand it now. It's not things just happen. They happen for a reason, and the reasons are well enough known that you can hack it right now. That's why hacking really matters. Gotcha. Well, you know, you're wearing these glasses. Uh, I always have, you know, Joe Sugarman, the inventor of blue blocker sunglasses, is here. He's just a genius. He sold 20 million pairs of blue blockers. Uh, you now utilize these, you're, the company's True Dark? The company's True Dark. This is a company I started. And I, I was just telling Joe, I bought my, pair, my first pair of blue blockers in eighth grade. I was so excited. I got my blue blockers. I'm so stylish. And these are blocking three quarters of the blue light, but not all blue light. And they're doing that because if you're exposed to high amounts of blue light, like you'll see in this room, just from normal indoor lighting these days, it causes your brain to get tired. You have sugar cravings at the end of the day, and you lose focus. And I've managed to triple my deep sleep, as measured by my ring, by changing to the True Dark glasses that are there for sleep. In fact, they've gotten rid of my jet lag. And who would have thought wearing dorky looking sunglasses could make a difference. There's a few people who wear these because their performance was worth it. And all I'm going to say is measure your performance. Look at how I'm feeling right now. And if you don't like it, there is a cause. And you can relatively easily change it. The whole bulletproof lifestyle is about doing that. Here's the most likely thing. Try this. If it works, you just got an ROI that's amazing because now you can use that for whatever you wanted to do. And that's, for me, what was always a struggle. It's gone. Why is it that everyone that wears these glasses all the time, though, is like a neurotic freak? It's because neurotic freaks rule the world, Joe. <laughs> As Gary Halbert would say, the world advances on the backs of its neurotics. <laughs> yes. No, uh, but I'm kidding, by the way, too. Just, yeah. uh, of, of course. Uh, if there is one simple, small aging change everyone in the room can make in their life starting right after this conversation, what should that first domino be? Ooh, just one starting right after. Normally, I'd say skip breakfast tomorrow already. Try some intermittent fasting. The evidence is so strong. This is good. But well, by the way, this. I'm paying for breakfast tomorrow if they skip it. Well, it might save me a lot of money if we Th do this. There you go. Matter. Yeah. It'll certainly save you a lot of time. And, and if you're saying, I'm going to die without breakfast, I do know some bulletproof coffees over there that I'm paying for, so that, that works. Yeah. Uh, but it, here's the thing. Skipping breakfast matters, but I'm going to suggest something else. When you order your dinner tonight, if it says fried on the menu, it's not food. And w when you read Superhuman, and yes, I'm telling you straight up, buy the book, it won't change my life. If you do, I wrote this thing with thousands of hours to change your life. But if you read that, I talk about advanced glycation end products and these other things that are formed when you fry your food. It's a simple thing to do, but if you want your brain to work for a long period of time, this will cause inflammation for days, at least 48 hours. Smoking a cigarette is going to give you 48 hours of inflammation. So seriously, skip the fries and smoke a cigarette. You'll be better off. Don't do either one. No, so, so eating french fries is more damaging to your body than smoking a cigarette. Damn straight. The science is in. In fact, nicotine in the book in low doses, not from smoking tobacco, but oral or patch, reduces Alzheimer's disease since studies from 1988. And I've interviewed the doctor from Vanderbilt who's done that research. It's also an amazing cognitive enhancer. 
So here's the thing. You can live without fried stuff. Order something else that tastes good. It's not that hard. But if no one tells you this and you have that voice that says, if I like it, it's a treat, I'm going to do it. No, punching yourself in the face isn't a treat, even if it tastes good. Yeah. So let, because I've done quite a few things. I mean, you come on my Alaskan fishing trip for the last couple of years, which is fun because we just get on a boat and with Jim do and tell the most horrendous, vulgar sort of like all day long. <laughs> and, um, you know, you, so 40 years is Zen, yeah. right? You, you have this, co- so I, I went through a seven day process with you uh, and you now have literally created, I mean, you've improved it dramatically. Um, and a lot of people with trauma, with a lot of issues, that process um, has changed a lot of people's lives. So what is yeah. that? One of the things that was holding me back, it wasn't just biology, it's you have patterns. You have a pattern matching system in the body. So someone walks into the boardroom and they look like a bully or they say something that your parents said to you and it creates a sensation and emotion. And then your brain says, let me put a story to that. And the reason is that person doesn't like me. Okay, it's all complete bullshit. It, it's not actually what's happening, but you're absolutely convinced it is. So I realized I had this in spades. And... I said, all right, how do we do this? And you can do it with all sorts of EMDR, all of the trauma things. I mean, you've done so much work about spreading that trauma's a real thing and it's not just a car accident and it's not just a sexual assault or something like that. It's a common thing. Any child who stopped breastfeeding was traumatized when they said, like, give me the boob and they didn't get it. There, there's a trauma. Everyone has that. Sorry. So that's probably not the one that's triggering you at your board, but there's stuff going on. So what we do at 40 Years of Zen is we put electrodes on your head and show your brain what it's doing and go through a process that turns off those traumas. So the pattern matching system gets corrected. You correct it yourself. And then we turn up voltage in the brain, increase neuron firing speed. And this is technology that doesn't exist anywhere else. We actually developed it specifically for the program. It's about altered states of high performance that all humans are capable of. It's just, unless you're going to spend 40 years meditating in a cave, you're probably not going to get there. And I've spent four months of my life doing that. So I would just invite you, if that's of interest, um, and you feel motivated, my email is up there. That's actually my email, Dave at, actually, it's Dave at bulletproof.com. Uh, that actually goes to me. So you can email me, whatever. I don't get paid from 40 years in, but it funds the research on how I hack my own brain, and I just want to share it with people. It's changed, it's changed a lot of people's lives. Yeah, I want, you know, and what I always like doing is connecting bright people together. I want you to meet Dr. Donald Woods, who's, who's here too, and he, talk to him about his Just process. interviewed him. You did? Absolutely. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we are, we are out of time. If there's okay. any last thing that you, I should have asked you, anything you'd like to say to send everyone off with, what would it be? I actually want to tell you guys, on the business side, following the advice from Perry up here and many others, I just hired a CEO for Bulletproof which is a, a really big thing. So if you want to hit me up about what it's like to grow a business and hire a CEO, and if you're looking for uh, access to bulletproof equity and things like that, I have a small amount of that I'd love to chat with you about. But basically the emotional and, and physical and even the neurofeedback mm-hmm. sides of that, it, it's a big thing to hire someone to take your baby and take it forward and to still be involved like that. So I'm really happy to share my experience with you if you're going through that same sort of thing. And I'm serious about that being my real email. Like, email me, I'll, we'll get on Skype, we'll talk about it, and I'd love to share what I know and learn from you as well. Awesome. You've done a spectacular job of building the hell out of a brand, and I mean, you've been in Genius Network for a few years, you've got, you're a good friend, and you're always uh, helping people, and you genuinely, like, I mean, we both have experienced people knocking us off and, and all kinds of ups <laughs> and God. downs, and it's just, it's just interesting to see how people play things out. I mean, it's easy to see someone having success for a short period of time, but just seeing the trajectory of how things go, so I'm super yeah. happy with and, and Joe, I, I just got to tell you, you've played a probably a bigger role than you know. You know, JJ is like, you got to go spend 25 grand in this guy Joe's meeting. I'm like, what? It <laughs> sounds like an awful lot of money, like probably 20% of my revenues or something. But I did it. And you, you really helped to change the community uh, that supports me and a lot of my thinking. So it's, I mean, we talk about this sometimes, but you've truly, genuinely done this. So if this is your first year, I, I cannot put words behind how much Joe and the relationships and the giving, just how much you've done. So I, I truly you. owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Dave Asprey. Thank you, sir. Q and A now. Any questions? Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's let's do a couple of questions that someone may have, and let me know in the back if we are out of time or not. So yeah, let's do some Q and A. Joe, I got one. Where are you? Over here. Joe. 
Oh, Whatever right there. Okay. okay. Sorry, until they turn the light on, we can't see up here. But <laughs> really cool. I am, I am sitting down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, your new book, when I read it, the first impression on Superhuman was worth two years of a functional anti-aging regenerative fellowship with A4M. So it's an excellent book. And uh, I have a question for you. What is your two biohack for pain. I'm punching assholes and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, it turns out, <laughs> I knew you'd like that, Joe. Yeah, All right. There is a trauma thing. Joe talks about this. There is a hypoxia that happens in your cells from holding on to stuff. So you can address it from understanding the nature of the pain. You can address it from adding oxygen, making your cells work better. And there's also topical pain relief stuff. Like, TK, I've used your things when I was at Burning Man with you. Um, I had a sprained spine, like torn ligaments in my lower back. I could you know, barely ride a bike. So I'm putting you know, your, your pain cream on. So there's a usefulness for, for topical things, for anesthetics, and there's usefulness from reducing inflammatory foods and like dealing with your emotional crap. And if you dial those things in, you should not be in pain regularly. If you are in pain, you must get to the bottom because pain sucks energy every day until you resolve it. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you can go down the addiction pathway if you don't solve it, or you've got to figure something out because you will not show up in the world the way you can if you have pain. Yep. Thank you. Go over here. Cameron. Hey, hey Dave. Cameron from hey, the C Cameron. CO Alliance. We've got um, an operational question. We rarely get into operations here, but you had an experience a couple of years ago with the second in command. Can you tell us what you learned through that process and having to remove them and go to a new one and what you wish you might have done earlier in that situation? You know, who was it earlier today was talking about wishful thinking? It was Keith, okay. So Keith's talk really resonated with me because when you hire people who are mission driven, there's a, a type of person who can be fully on board with the mission and they so desperately want to, uh, they want to work with you, they want to please you. But if they suffer from wishful thinking, then they're going to go down a path that isn't a real path, right? And then it's your job as a CEO or an owner to understand, is, are, have you absorbed that wishful thinking? Did you transmit that wishful thinking? Is it actually your fault? Uh, and then how do you understand whether it's, it's real or not? And what I discovered it, is that it goes back to, I believe, trauma, actually, is that if the idea of failing is so abhorrent that you can't fail, then even if you're failing, you won't know it. So you want to hire someone who has experienced failure and has dealt with it and gone forward, someone who's always wanted everything they ever do, you got to wonder, is that real? Hmm. Or did they not actually when they just said they won? And you can do this with reference checks and all, but sometimes you just have to check your gut and go, that doesn't quite look right, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be empowering and all that. So it's look at the numbers and make sure that you double check the numbers. And if the numbers don't match what you're hearing, then something's going on. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, who, who was next out of you two? Yeah. Let's um, get a light on him too, if we could. Uh, Dave, Chris, Chris we got to say Chris Voss, man, top FBI hostage negotiator in the world. This guy's a stud. All right. Chris, thanks, my thanks wife was telling me to call you. She read your book and was just going crazy. About it. She's like, you need to call Chris and have him negotiate something for you. So <laughs> I'm not joking. Maybe an equity deal that you were talking about earlier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or something. And I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm negotiable. Yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. All right, so uh, my question, though, is there are some researchers out there that say if you consume anything other than water at all, it's broken to fast. I was just wondering about your thoughts on that. It, it's funny because those researchers are looking at mouse studies where the mice don't have a choice to drink anything other than water, but I see no evidence that says, for instance, putting salt in your water uh, is going to, to do a bad thing. And I have interviewed a variety of people on autophagy as well as read the original research myself, and I'll stand by the fact that if you put only fat in during a fast, depending on the type of fat, your insulin levels will not change whatsoever. And autophagy, at least one, the primary form of autophagy, which is when your cells break down dead old cells and get rid of junk, right. that that stays turned on if you have only fat. And so I think the evidence is in at this point. 
having coffee during a fast will double the amount of ketones your body makes. And the polyphenols in plant compounds, without all the carbs, without all the proteins, that those will actually feed your good gut bacteria. So I'm very suspicious of the purists who say you can only have water. Like, they haven't tried a double-blind study of water versus a coffee fast. But traditionally, they drank tea during a fast. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And then is it Celia? We can get a light on her. Yes, I think that gentleman across the room was before oh, okay. me. So. Let's do that. Let's put some lights on so I can at least see who's where. Is it Paris? Yeah. Hey, Dave. Hey, Paris. What's the uh, name of that ring you wear that measures your sleep? Um, this one? <laughs> <laughs> it's Aura, O-U-R-A. Just full disclosure, I'm an investor and advisor, so, uh, but that said, I was CTO of Basis, the wristband company, Intel bought for $100 million. This ring kicks ass. Like, this is a very good piece of tech. And what's U funny, where's Sapreet, the CEO of the company, is in the room right yeah, now. Where is, is he? he? He's a genius network member. Where is he? Is he in there somewhere? He took a call. He, is, <laughs> he, he, he took a call. Yeah, he's, he's actually it's, here. His name's Sapreet. It's an aura ring. In, in terms of uh, sleep measurement, this is profound because it's very low maintenance. You just wake up and, how did I do last night? It's, it's easy. Awesome. Thanks. And, and who was next? Is that Cheryl? Yes. Okay. Hi. Let's go, hi. Cheryl, and then we'll go to Celia. Okay. okay. Hi, Cheryl Hodgson. Dave, I just want to thank you. The last year has been amazing. The finally decided to do bulletproof coffee. And I have a question. The brain octane oil, I mean, 5 a.m. wake up, six hours of like, go. <laughs> awesome. But the question I have is, where does the butter fit in? Okay. The ghee is great, but I need to understand... Where that? Why? Why? Well, because yeah, I hear you, that you, a lot. This guy's got more people that eat grass-fed butter than probably <laughs> anyone on the planet. You created a global shortage. You did? Yeah, in 2014, they, they couldn't get enough. Wow. Someone got arrested for smuggling it from Norway to Sweden. I was like, that's awesome. You've left a mark on humanity. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal with butter. Butter contains butyric acid, which when you eat it, according to three studies in my first book, changes inflammation levels in the brain and in the upper GI tract, different than if your gut bacteria make it. It also slows the absorption of the brain octane because a lot of people, if you take just brain octane or much worse, straight MCT oils, you are going to experience disaster pants in a, in a major way, which is a medical condition that most of us have experienced at least once. And butter helps with that. Butter is also creamy and delicious. So when you put it in there, you tend to get satiety. Also, brain octane is an energy fat. It is burned almost entirely for fat. 45% of your cell membranes are saturated fats, like the kind found in butter. And when you eat that, it becomes a building block for you, and the energy fat, the brain octane, becomes the source of energy that's not a sugar. So I've found over lots of experimenting that that combination is best tolerated by most people. It's most delicious, it's creamiest, and if you put just brain octane in there, there's a lot of people who just don't tolerate it. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Celia Black, who's Ray Kurzweil's CMO and a great friend. She's awesome. <laughs> um, thank, thank you, Joe. That's sweet of you to say. Um, Dave, I have a question about your 180-year um, mark. So I worked on um, Fantastic Voyage, How to Live Long Enough to Live Forever with Ray Kurzweil and yes. Dr. Terry Grossman. And the research we did there, their solution for living forever was, of course, their three bridges, which is use all the tools that you have at your disposal now to live long enough for the advent of the biotech revolution, which will then carry you to the advent of the nanotech revolution, and that's how you're going to get to live forever. But Dr. Stephen Coles, who was a gerontology researcher at UCLA, a preeminent gerontology researcher, found that most humans to date hit that brick wall of 120 um, because of amyloid plaque. So I'm wondering with your 180 year prediction, is that just a, do you think we can get there biologically or do you think that includes a technological intervention? Ooh, amyloid plaque, that's pretty sexy. You guys are into that, right? It turns out there's seven pillars of aging that we understand. And think of it like this. If you're going to maintain your car, you have to do oil and transmission fluid and all the other stuff. You can't do just one. 
So amyloid plaque is what I call cellular straitjackets in the book. And this is stuff, you've heard of beta amyloid causes Alzheimer's disease. It turns out throughout the body you get amyloid. One of the biggest triggers of amyloid plaque is inflammation, any kind of inflammation. And a primary form is you breathe mold toxins. And it can also come from that fried food, which is very high in amyloid as well. And when those amyloids come into the body, um, something happens. The toxins usually cause a biofilm to form. You get bacteria inside the body that pump out amyloids, and then viruses use the amyloids as a shell, and you end up getting cells that are inflexible, and over time they age. So what you want to do is reduce inflammation now, which reduces formation of amyloid over time. And in the book, I talk about two promising new technologies for reducing amyloid plaque. So this is one of those things where enzymatically and through processes like autophagy and possibly even stem cells that we can, we can reduce this enough. But bottom line is maybe you could just eat less fried crap, do less inflammatory things, and you're not going to have an amyloid problem for another 40 years. And it comes down to, let's be preventative on that one for now, but the tech is not more than five years away. Awesome. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Okay, I hope you found that video awesome and useful. So if you want to get a free copy of my book, I want you to click here. And if you want to watch some more videos that will be useful and awesome, click here. Go ahead. You're over here. Do it now. Come on. Thank you. Watch them.